Hi all, welcome you all for another fantastic technical topic and it's about pump piping design. So let's welcome you all to my channel Pemi Daka and I am Subhash Chandran with 17 years of experience in piping design. So without wasting your time, let's get started. Pump piping. Pump piping is considered to be one of the most critical piping in process piping design. So we have to evaluate lot of parameters before proceeding for pump piping. So in this video, we are going to study about various parameters that are to be studied before proceeding for pump piping design. So how many number of uh, parameters we are going to see is that we are going to list down nearly 10 numbers of parameters that you have to study before proceeding for pump piping design. So let's get started with the first one actually. The first one you have to study is the type of a pump. You have to do this study because there are many types of pumps are there. So the one which you see on this photo is a centrifugal type and other one which you see is uh, basically a gear type and a lobe type and a metering pump. There are a lot of varieties of pumps are available. In order to do a pump piping, you have to understand what kind of pump you are going to mount actually, what kind of pump you are going to locate on what kind of pump that you are going to install the piping. Accordingly, the piping design changes because the bigger size pump has more vibration than smaller size pumps as I mean the vice versa, the bigger size pumps will have a less vibration but smaller size pumps will have high vibration. So you have to understand what type of pump that you are going to use in the piping design. The next topic is that size and weight of the pump. Most piping engineers don't give the importance for the size and weight. The size and uh, weight of the pump is critically important. Let me tell you why it is. The size of the pump occupies the whole lot of space in the layout. So layout design is purely upon the size of any component that you are going to install in the layout. And then the civil design. Civil design depends upon the weight. If you are going to have a huge number of uh, I mean huge weighted component on the floor but your civil foundation is not adequate enough to handle that then it's absolutely a failure right. So you have to know the both size and as well as weight only then you'll be able to plan the layout and accordingly you can provide an input to the civil team so that they can plan the foundations accordingly. Now let's move on to the third point. Third point is the pump nozzle arrangement. Why is it so important pump nozzle arrangement? Now I will share you two photos. In two photos, you can compare and see. See, this pump has a uh, front entry and top discharge, and this pump has side entry and side discharge. Only you know when you know about the nozzle arrangement, you'll be able to plan the piping actually. So, you cannot simply copy a piping of one pump to another pump. So, no nozzle arrangement actually varies with pump to pump and the type of manufacturers and the type of pumps actually. There will be a lot of variations in terms of this uh, arrangements and size and uh, uh, the weight of the pump so accordingly you have to do so don't forget to evaluate about the the nozzle arrangements now let's move on to the fourth one the fourth one is you have to trace the supply and return of the piping from where it comes and where it goes actually see you have to understand from where the line comes and where it goes because only then you will be able to plan the location of the pump right so you need to understand the source and you have to i mean the supply source and as well as the discharge source so that you can plan the appropriate location to place your pump actually otherwise you may not be able to place your pump because the distance from the supply source to the pump should be as minimum as possible only then the pump will work fine actually so that's one of the reasons why i want you to trace this uh, supply and uh, return discharge uh, locations actually now let's go to the fifth one the fifth one is nozzle size and rating nozzle size and ratings are much more important because this is where you're going to connect the piping actually Imagine your piping spec will call for 150 rated but at the end if you receive the pump and it will be of 300 rated. So before proceeding for pump piping you should know what is the rating of the flange and accordingly you have to plan your connection with the piping actually otherwise you will end up creating a lot of big mismatch during the construction you may not be able to procure this material. Now let's move on to the next one. Next one is support study. Before placing uh, a pump or before planning for a pump piping actually you have to understand what are the nearby supports because you can reuse this support. Let's take uh, this as an example. Imagine this support is an existing. So you what you can do is that you can route the piping in accordingly in such a way that you can reuse the support. You don't have to provide an additional support. So in order to avoid a new supports, you have to evaluate the nearby supports that will really help you to uh, make the better piping so you can reduce the cost so you can make a better pipe routing for this actually now let's move on to the next topic next um, uh, parameter is the location study yes let me show you the example location study so you may have we can have multiple locations actually but 
in order to finalize this location you have to um, understand the supply and return source you have to see which is the right place in order to get uh, the um, minimum uh, supply uh, distance and minimum return distance so that you can minimize the uh, i mean the the efforts that are put in by the pumps actually you can minimize the pressure uh, drop within the uh, in the pump suction and as well as discharge that will increase the efficiency of the pump and it will achieve the operation flow efficiency also right so you simply cannot place somewhere else where you cannot get the supply and you simply cannot place a pump somewhere else where you uh, cannot make a discharge actually so pump location is really to be studied and you can uh, place the pump and multiple locations and check whether it is possible or not whether it is efficient or not so these are the studies that you have to do before placing a pump and before doing a pump piping actually now let's move on to the next one the next one is road and crane access why road and crane access is uh, required because without crane and road access and will you be able to install the pump or will you be able to remove the pump will you be able to do any maintenance actually so before planning for a pump piping you have to locate the pump and you have to uh, do the pump piping in such a way that you can uh, provide an access for the cranes actually imagine that you are filling your piping a uh, whole lot of piping over the pump will you be able to uh, allow the crane to access the pump since your a uh, top of the pipe pump is completely covered with piping you may not be able to access the pump actually so you have to provide an accessibility maintenance for the cranes only then you will be able to um uh, what you do the maintenance and installations properly right so this is another point and the ninth one is npsh most of us do not know what is npsh is about npsh is nothing but net positive suction head what is net positive suction head net positive suction head is the minimum suction head required for a pump to start without priming scenarios actually because priming is something where you where the bubbles the air bubbles will get into the impeller and the, this will uh, damage the the periphery of the impeller and over a period of time it can damage the impeller material in a very uh, a worst way you can imagine to have a huge explosions actually so net positive suction head is really really important to uh, maintain to be maintained in any piping so you have to study about this uh, there are required um, net positive suction head and uh, available net positive suction head you have to maintain the required net positive suction head as a minimum in order to have the safe piping for pump piping design now let's go to the last one the last one is the associated items most of us do not know what are the associated items the pump doesn't come alone with uh, only pumps and it has got a motor it has got uh, various other things the one which are going to see one which are seeing over here is a seal pot and there could be many other things actually there could be a panels that could be uh, some sort of an, a junction boss that could be uh, some sort of um, uh, monitor vibration monitor that could be many things actually so pump is not a standalone item it has an associated item it comes as a package so we have to study about that only then you will be able to plan imagine that you are planning you are piping on top of uh, i mean on this way but uh, you did not consider the seal pot over here and finally you will end up having the clash with the seal pot and you have to redo your piping in accordingly so what i'm saying is that you have to study what are the associated items in the pump so only then you will be able to uh, prepare a pipe, pump piping uh, a routing or pump piping design which can um, which won't change later on when the pump package comes as a final package from the vendor so these are the 10 things that you have to do so i believe that these 10 parameters are most critical parameters for all the piping design engineers to do before pump piping design so please follow this and this will help you to develop the best pump piping routing and best pump piping design so before ending my video let me tell you about my pipe routing course for oil and gas you can go and check my website the link i will show you in the uh, description box because this course is one of the most expected skill across the world imagine that you go to an interview and uh, not in a position to uh, respond uh, to the interviewer about a simple question asked about your pipe routing skill say for an example they'll give you a psv and they will ask you to route a downstream and upstream of PSV what do you do you need to know the concept you need to know the supporting philosophies you need to know the engineering facts and basis before proceeding so this course will really help you to think like a design engineer before uh, I mean uh, before making any uh, pipe uh, routing uh, before making any uh, decisions of uh, engineering uh, design so that you'll be able to confidently speak from your mind actually the link of this uh, course I have already uh, given in the description box you can go and check it 
and you can find the preview videos in my site and you can uh, go through the preview videos this course is the best seller course and this will be really really useful for all piping design engineers i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandran thank you so much for watching my video if you are interested to such contents that i am putting here please subscribe to my channel and i will continue to support you to enhance your knowledge thank you so much